hydrogen lamp, ground states, excited states, deal spore. What are those? Stay tuned and get ready to learn some chemistry. Welcome back to Siri Pecara Kimia Awak. In this video, we're going to learn about Bohr's atomic model. After conducting an experiment with hydrogen lamp, Niels Bohr developed the Bohr's atomic model in 1913. He put forward four postulates to sum up the model. Number one. Electron moves in circular orbits around the nucleus. These circular paths are known as energy levels. Postulate number two. The energies of electrons are quantized. Determined by quantum number, n equals to 1, 2, 3, and 4, and 5, and until infinity. You get the point, right? An electron neither absorbs nor radiates energy if it's fixed in its orbit. Therefore, we can calculate the energy of the electron when it's fixed on its orbit. We can use this formula over here. En equals the negative Rh times 1 over n squared. Rh is the Rydberg constant with a value of 2.18 exponent negative 18 joule. Now, let's try to calculate the energy of the electron on your screen. This electron is situated at n equals to 1. Can you do it? You're absolutely right. So this is the energy of the electron when it is located at n equals to 1. And the third postulates. When the electron absorbs energy, it will be excited to a more energetic orbit. So as you can see over here, the electron has moved up to n equals to 2, which is higher than n equals to 1. Given enough energy, the electron can move to a higher energy level like n equals to 3, 4, 5, even infinity. Again, you get the point, right? And finally, postulate number four. Now pay attention on the electron at n equals to two. This electron is at the excited state. It is unstable and therefore it will return to the ground state. So when the electron drops from higher energy level to a lower energy level, energy will be emitted in a form of photon. Now let's try some examples by using these formula. Are you ready? Let's go! So this is the formula you're going to use to calculate delta E. Delta E is the energy of the photon. And when you are able to find out what is delta E value is, you can transfer that value into here if you need to find out what is the wavelength of that photon. Alternatively, you can also use this formula down here. But you need to be careful because you have two types of Friedberg constant value. This one is 2.18 exponent negative 18 joule, remember, for delta E. But this one is 1.097 to the power of 7 per meter. And this one is for the wave number 1 over lambda. 
remember that, okay? So we're going to look at one example. So the question I have for you is this. Calculate the energy of release. So the energy of release when one electron from the sixth energy level drops to the third energy level in hydrogen atom. Okay, so how are we going to do this one? Before we're going to go to that, I'm just going to refresh a little bit. You've seen this before. So this is the energy level in the atom. You have your nucleus in the middle. You have n equals to 1, 2, 3, and 4. So this representation can also be written like this. Okay? So your teacher or lecturer might gonna emphasize on using this one as well. So the question just now wants you to, if I'm gonna put that here, to calculate the energy release, one electron drop from energy level number six to the third one. So imagine if you have this electron, okay? You have that electron at the ground states, n equals to one. So when this electron receive energy from outside, it will jump to energy level number six, okay? So at this point, you do not have energy being released, but you have energy being absorbed. So you don't have a photon yet, okay? So what happened over here, because um, this electron is unstable at a much higher end, it will drop to a lower one. And according to this question, the energy will drop to n equals to 3. So when that happens, the energy will be released in the form of photon. Okay, I'm going to do that again from number 6, n equals to 6. It will drop to number 3 and the energy will be released. It can also drop to 2 or 1, but we have to solve this question. So, just now I have shown to you um, a few formulas over here. So in order for us to solve this question, we have to use this formula over here, delta E, because this is the energy of the photon. So it's very simple. All you need to do is you can rewrite the formula. Now, so what is an initial and final? So you have to go back to your questions here. So according to this question, your n initial will be n equals to 6, because that is where the electrons is going to be coming from to release energy and then n final will be n equals to 3 so we're going to write that down first and initial is 6 and and final is 3 okay so we're just going to substitute the value in here so you have delta e equals to don't forget your rh value is 2.18 exponent negative 18 so 2.18 times 15 joule, 1 over initial square, initial square, 6 squared, minus 1 over 3 squared. Okay, so let's do that one by one, shall we? Okay, 2.18 times 10 negative 18 joule 0 0.02778 minus 0 0.1111 okay so what is 0 0.02778 minus 0 0.1111 times 10 negative 18 joule negative 0 0.08332 okay so it's going to be negative 1.816 times 10 negative 19 um, over here is joule so this is the energy being released by this transition over here so this is the energy of your photon okay so you can write down some conclusion over here therefore energy 
release yes I can omit negative sign over here because when it is at in this form the negative sign is to signify that this energy is being released 0.816 times 10 negative 19 joules so that should be fine okay so that is the energy of the photon but what about if the wavelength so what is the wavelength of that photon being released remember just now guys i've told you about this i've used this formula to get the energy of the photon okay and i have two choices whether i'm gonna use this formula to get the wavelength or i can use this formula to get the wavelength so let's try this one when you are going to substitute the value of delta e into here okay 1.816 times 10 negative 19 joule okay because i'm gonna use this formula I'm going to ignore the negative sign. So 1.816 times 10 negative 19 equals 2. Okay, so we have the Planck's constant. 6.62. Okay, and then you have the speed of light over wavelength. Okay, so how are we going to do this? So you do it one by one. So I'm going to move that to the other side. 2.741 times 10, 14 equals to 3.0 times 10 to the power of 8 over wavelength. Okay, so now how do we get the wavelength then? So the wavelength, so we're going to move to this to the other side 2.741 times 10 to the power of 9 to the power of 14 and what do we get 10 negative 6 this one should be in uh da, 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 da. so that is the wavelength but unfortunately, Bohr's atomic model has its weaknesses. So guys, to recap, in this video, we have learned about the four postulates of Bohr's atomic model, its weaknesses, a few formulas, and how to use them in problem solving. So before I'm going to go, I'm just going to remind you, don't forget to click like, share, and subscribe. That's all for today. If you want to get more examples, just click the link down below. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you.